it's very, very difficult to find places to promote standalone restaurants. It's a very fragmented industry and all you can do is put a blackboard outside your door and do a local leaflet drop. On the web was just coming along and I thought it might be an idea to build a website and promote it that way. Um, Top Table really um, is, um, is a community of restaurateurs and we promote restaurants under one umbrella of Top Table. So that's really um, how I came to, to start Top Table. It was out of necessity, which I think is um, sometimes a very good driver for creation, isn't it? So the first thing we did was we, um, over a two week period, um, rang um, a group of restaurants from very, again, very high scale Michelin star restaurants all the way down to bistros. And we rang them twice a day to see if they could fit us in a table for two at eight o'clock that evening. And almost without exception, even the big named restaurants, if they couldn't fit us in at eight o'clock, they could fit us in at nine or ten. So from that, we could see also that restaurants had tables um, that they needed to fill. And that was our basic principle in the beginning, um, was that restaurants could give us tables that they couldn't fill. We decided that we'd give ourselves three months in order to decide whether this was a project worth devoting time to. And we quite literally worked from my kitchen table and even up until we were about a dozen people, we were still working in my home. Um, and I, I, I can remember things like, you know, we had to queue up to use the phone and, you know, stuff like that. So um, I, I think, you know, I think many, many businesses that have grown to be really quite large have started off like that, literally in somebody's back bedroom, or in my case, my kitchen. The only way, if you are a non-technology person, um, is to have as detailed a plan as possible and a roadmap. Um, and, you know, projects often run over. You will often hear people saying, oh, my site took three times the amount of time to build as we all thought um, and projects slip quite early on it isn't that you know it doesn't slip at the end it slipped somewhere way back in the beginning so if there are a few things that I'd have to say that um, I've learned is try not to change the spec as you're going along do quite a granular project plan and meet frequently At the end of 2000 to the beginning of 2001, when the tech bubble well and truly burst, um, I was faced one morning at the newsstand at Victoria Station with a headline which said how celebrities have lost 100 million on their dot coms, um, with a picture of Sir Alex Ferguson in the middle, David Bowie at one side and Delia Smith at the other. Um, and that was all very demoralising. Um, so sometimes you can get a little bit caught up um, in, in, in press, for better or for worse, where you have high profile people involved. Um, definitely on balance though, it has been great to have these people involved and they have been most encouraging and a lot more participative than many people might think. You get to make the model up completely as you go along. So that's quite good um, because, quite frankly, you have to... One of the things I would say um, is that you have to be very nimble and you have to be very adaptable because certain things that you think will work or work in a particular way don't. So you have to be, you know, really, really in, the right, in, in a mindset and prepared to change things that you thought might be set in stone, things like business model, you know, how you're going to make money. You sort of think you know, but you don't really until you get started. We have really had to teach, you know, restaurateurs, first of all, to work with a third party. They, they, they're not accustomed to doing that. Um, and then consumers, we've had to show them a whole new different way of, of doing, a new and different way of doing things. People like to participate. Now, this is not this is no surprise, you know, when you see the success of um, YouTube and all social networkings and so on. 
Um, but people like to be involved. And so a number of things that we find incredibly popular. Every time um, a person books and goes out to eat through Top Table, the next day we send them an opportunity to rate and review the restaurant. People love doing that. Everybody is a bit of a critic. One of the things that's been very successful for us and to get people to increase the frequency that they use our service um, is that people collect reward points. And it's, it's not an original idea, it's very like air miles. But, you know, our headline is book six times and eat for free. Um, it is quite a compelling headline. And we just build that into our marketing budget. So I think you need a combination of skills that I haven't seen present in one single person. So I think um, you probably need to combine technology, marketing, you need an operations person. You need somebody who is able to commercialise your idea. There are quite a lot of companies around again who are very keen to make their money just from advertising. And although online advertising is the fastest, grow fastest growing, it is still a very small amount of overall advertising spend. So I think people need to think very long and hard about how they're going to make money and to find as many streams as possible. It's very important to, to be um, choosy about who you have as shareholders because things don't always go smoothly and it's very important to have a group of people who are not going to put you under undue pressure because to be frank you're already up under enough. But there were um, basically friends and, friends and associates so we didn't have any uh, VC backing or um, you know, commercial backing in that sense. Um, it was funded by a group of friends and associates and, and myself. The amount of effort that goes in early on is just enormous and the, the sacrifice that you ask of people. Now you're never really aware that you're asking them to sacrifice stuff but actually just by hours and all that sort of thing you actually are. We pay people um, I think very very competitively in the market and that's one of the things I, I really believe in as well. Um, I really think you need to pay people properly if you, if you expect to get the best people and for them not to have to worry about money. You want them totally focused on what they're doing in the business. Um, but to also give them an upside that they wouldn't have in any other job. So um, in terms of, of shared equity, I mean, many of my colleagues now, um, you know, would definitely be in a position where, you know, if in a year or 18 months the company is sold, they would definitely be in a position to, I don't know, pay off their mortgage or maybe even buy a house outright, what do I know? It probably is better to have a smaller share of a bigger cake. And you have to be willing along the way, in my opinion, to um, involve people in the equity of the company if you are going to attract the right people. So um, along the way, I have given away in some, instance, in some instances, parts of my shares simply because I've wanted to have particular people involved in the company. I own very slightly less than half of Top Table today, but I'm hoping that the shares that I've sold and given away mean that the business has got, you know, and it definitely has got bigger, but it will get even bigger. Um, and so I'm very happy to have done that. For top table, what keeps me optimistic is that we still have the startup mentality of making money go a long way. So in times of expenses, when, when, when we will never be extravagant. And so that's good. And also because we are still um, relying on a lot of our growth for channel sh from channel shifting, um, we are still, you know, 50% up year on year. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I'm very optimistic for our own business. Um, and, you know, in certain respects, maybe it has just brought things to a little temporary kind of slowdown as they were getting a little fast and furious. So hopefully some good things will come out of this as well.